what's happening everybody all right so <clears throat> we are going to uh, talk about rates this morning and uh, learn how to do math all right so it's a big face truck a big face trucker is gonna like this he's gonna like this and uh, you know if you haven't seen this video he had a real good video a few days ago over the weekend um, with a broker sitting there breaking bread um, good stuff what's up big text trucker um, BB trucking what's going on there's big text John Leroy what's happening Schmitty Spooby all right so we're gonna talk about learning math first if you're gonna comment RPG -er, I, I think that's his thing if you're gonna comment at least, at least take your phone. It's got a calculator on it. Take your phone and actually do a calculation. I deleted his comment because I didn't want people to make fun of him because, you know, he couldn't do math. And, you know, he did his little comment and then he said that, uh, I don't know, SH, you know what about trucking and, um, I never owned a truck, you know, or whatever. I don't know. <clears throat> but he's, he's, he's implementing that we're running around for 80 cents a mile. And, and a lot of people are saying this, right, which is false. It's total false. Are there 80 cents a mile loads out there? Of course there are. Are we running that? No, we're not. Um, but, you know, he, he took. Now, everybody think of the math here. I know you guys are smart that watch this channel. All right. When I said, uh, you know, last month in April, some of our guys averaged 16 to 20 grand. Gross. And he says, well, you're, you're running the blank, 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 blank. A lot of explicit, you know, he's swearing, right? And we all know I don't put up with that, you know, in the chats. So to get away from that, so his comment would go in there, he, he did the little asterisk thing, right? We're not stupid. And... He said, look at all the miles you're putting in your truck. 80 cents a mile, you know, 16 grand. First of all, a single guy cannot do 20,000 miles in a month. It's not happening. Can't do the math, can you? Because that'd be 20,000 miles times 80 cents would be 16,000. So, and if they did 20, that, you know, if they did 20, that means <sighs> unbelievable, you know. What are they going to do? 25,000 miles in a month? Come on. You know, so if you're going to make smart, you know what, comments, at least do the math. At least get your, at least get your little phone out, you know, and attempt to have somewhat of a uh, correct answer. What do you guys think? Um, so I, should I stop, you know, uh, busting as you know what's. But anyway, what's up, Alpha Wolf? What's going on? Executive Solutions, what's happening? Anthony Bressler, what's happening? Glenn, uh, what's going on? Mike, I get 51 cents in a company truck. Yeah. <clears throat> Waving from I-80. See, I, I, can't, I can't even figure that out, Mike, you know. Uh, will you over by Walcott? Where are you at? All right, anyway. What's up, Ali? What's happening? The guy told me he had uh, he did four million miles in twenty three years. That's over four hundred every day. Do the math. No, he that. Yeah, I seen that too. You know, I, I read that too, and I was kind of laughing. Uh, you know, trying to do the calculation. You know, unless unless Mike he was a team driver and he counted the whole miles of the truck, which you know technically he might have did. 4 million miles, but he didn't drive 4 million miles. His body might have been in that truck, and the trucks that he was in averaged, you know, it was 4 million, you know. Um, that might be a possibility. But doing it by yourself and that, no. Can't do it without a teammate. Not in that many years. No, you got to have a lot more than that. <clears throat> What's up, 
Big Nate Jobber, what's going on? What's up? He says, sitting here, nothing to pick up in Springfield, Missouri. There's all kinds of stuff to pick up Springfield. Steve picked up something in Springfield. Uh, yeah, he's rolling. He's rolling. All right, so we all know freight is bad because uh, the states are shut down and they're trying to do a slow rollout. You got to ask yourself. Do we stay? Now you know what it feels like if you were in a um, a socialism country, right? Where they just want to hand you free money, keep you locked down, can't do nothing, can only do what they say, and if you violate what they say, you're in trouble. Uh, kind of like, you know, you got to wear a mask inside this place or that place, they're going to find you and all this good stuff. Um now you kind of know what it feels like, and I can't believe that a lot of Americans are putting up with it. Um, I guess they don't teach constitutional rights in the schools anymore. They probably took it out of there when they took out the flag and uh, prayer and all that stuff. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> enough of that. And then, of course, you know what happens is when... These states hand out free money, and it's more money than people make, right? They keep them. They keep them sitting, and people love it because they have no work ethic anymore, right? They just try to take the free money and just sit there. Um, but there's always a repercussion. The repercussion is going to be everybody that works is going to pay a lot of money in taxes, because, yeah, that's right, Spooby. They took that out, too. And they took out discipline, too. That's what's wrong with a lot of um, the other generation right now growing up. What's up, Overtax in Minnesota? What's happening? So, anyway, the country needs to you need to get back to working. Because here's a perfect example. President orders that the meat factories open, and then all the workers are, oh, no, we can't go there because we might catch COVID. We might get this. You don't care about our health and blah, 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 because they don't want it. They're getting more money to sit at home, so they don't want to go back to work. But what they're not understanding is, isn't that an essential business? I mean, it provides food. And if they don't go back to work, we're only... A couple weeks of not having no meat whatsoever in the store. It's like pork, right? None. Anywhere. Be gone. And it's pretty bad when they're euthanizing, you know, the livestock. So what, you know, it's just waste. For what? And look at the food. You know, they got farmers down in Florida are... Handing it out and selling it to the general public. Because there's no one to, to take it to the warehouses or anything. Same thing out in, I think it was Idaho or, or uh, Montana or somewhere. I was reading about um, farmers with full loads of potatoes. And they're just giving them away. So you really want anarchy, chaos, all this good stuff? Let the food source run out. And if... The people behind what's going on think they got problems like they're doing. Wait till there's no food and see what happens. See see how the human mentality and being see what they actually are capable of doing. When you when you take away the food and people are starving, you will see something you'll never want to see before. <clears throat> think about that. All the people that are just loving life and, you know, living free on the on the government money. Um, when they can't buy any food, see what happens. Jamar says, I don't care. That's the problem. Yep. William Parker's a savagery. Yep. No, who cares about that? Elbow cough. Come on. Hey, when you have... See, this This is what is ridiculous. You got, when the flu comes around, you have people go to work with the flu. They spread it to everybody else because they don't care. 
But now they all of a sudden they care. I don't know. That's no, that's why they ordered the meat plants to open. But it, did you notice? Just like with General Motors, right? Just like when they were shutting down uh, General Motors. And the first thing they said was, you know, it's going to take another seven days and they'll shut down slowly. And you had a bunch of UAW members going, oh, they don't care about me. I have to work three or four more days than the other guy and I could get sick and I could, I could pass away. They don't care about me crying because they didn't get to go home like the other guy got to go home. You know. Same thing with the meat plants. Did you see all the all the hype on it now? All the workers are crying about it. They don't want to go back to work. Um, you know, and then you got people. This is how bad it is with your liberties. They got people out there. You know, let's say you go out and it's a lake or whatever. You go out there and you got a boat and you got your family with you. They got people calling in on these people and getting them, getting the police out there and, and making them go home and things like that. Unbelievable. Outlaw 76, you're exactly right. If you look at all the states that are closed and don't want to reopen, it's all blue states. That's a tragedy. Because there's another agenda. Other agenda is they have to tank the economy. They got to make it real bad. They got to make lots of people starve and go without money, food, everything, or, or hand them free money to win the election because there's no other way they would have won. If the country's wanting to shut down, even if you don't like Trump, he would have won. He would have won because the Democrats had nothing to offer. And the only way to get a president who had good numbers, good economy, everything else going on for him is to tank the economy, tank the stock market, all that good stuff. And that's what happened. Because look at New York, for example. I got tired of watching Como sitting up there. And all it was was, we need 30,000 ventilators. Right? And they didn't use any of those ventilators. They didn't even use the ship that they brought in there. They didn't. It was overhyped. They didn't use none of that stuff. And the hospitals weren't, overflow, weren't overflowing because I have truck driving friends that live there. And they go by there and say, no. They're not overflowing. I don't know what they're even talking about over here. So... And then people say, oh, no, they had this. Well, you know, you can stage anything. You know, if, if you need people, you can pay people to show up. I mean, they do it all the time, right? But it's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, Ball Stryker says, uh, the other agenda is the Dems politicizing the COVID-19 break, trying to get Trump out of office. It's pretty obvious, I'm thinking. And if you notice, as soon as some of these states reopened, all of a sudden they have a huge outbreak of corona, right? Huge outbreak. They got to all these big significant numbers. But yet they couldn't test for it before. They didn't have the testing before. But now all of a sudden they have the testing over the weekend and it only took a day to get it back or two days. You know, I, I'm just tired of the whole thing. Um we're going to go on it right now. Rates down or not? Well, rates are up and down, up and down like a roller coaster, just like anywhere else. Depends where you're at. Um, but there is one thing. It, you know, you just can't sit at home hoping everything's going to get all nice and fuzzy and warm and feel better. And it, like like the gentleman I was talking to you before, when he, he tried to say, you know, you had to do 20,000 miles, 80 cent miles, whatever. This was a statement which cracked me up. Actually, you guys want to hear the statement? Um, it's pretty funny. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, let me see if I can find the comment. Let's see here. It was on 4.30. Now this, this, this is the funny comment right here. I have been parked 
for three weeks. I can go broke sitting at home and not burn fuel, not wear out my equipment. And I don't think uh, this guy knows, you know what, about owning and operating a truck. This guy says, I don't know, SHI, you know what, about, what do you think about that other trucker, James Best? I don't know anything about, I'm not going to use the word, owning and operating a truck. <laughs> but he says, he says, now this is how stupid his terminology is. I've been parked for three weeks. I can go broke sitting at home and not burn fuel and wear out my equipment. Well, you know what? If you go broke, you won't have that piece of equipment anyway. So that's just stupid terminology. I'm going to sit home and go broke because I don't want to wear my equipment out. Well, you know what? You go broke. They take that equipment. I buy it. Because it has a whole lot less miles out of nowhere and tear. And I, I, I make out, you lose. You know, somebody will buy it. Because you lose the truck anyway. That just um, shows the, you know. Park your trucks, they say. Park your trucks. Okay, park your trucks. You ain't going to have no food. You ain't going to have nothing. You know, if everybody parks their trucks, you have nothing. And I'll tell you another thing. You can't park your trucks. If if every truck driver parked their trucks, then the president would order everybody to go back to work. Because they're not going to let the national security of the country. That'd be a national security issue. They'd make you drive that truck. Like it or not, or believe it or not, they would make you drive that truck. All right, what do you guys think about that statement? Kind of like they're making the food workers go back to work, and that's just the food. With me filing S Corp, how can I utilize my tax deduction for the truck purchase being in my name? Well, what you do, Executive Solution, is you would lease that truck onto your company and pay yourself 1099 just like you did if you were leased onto some other company you would do the same thing and then you could do it you know do your schedule C for that business and take the deduction that way yeah so you okay, the truck you did 15.8k we had a guy that done um, 16 plus 18 in uh, 17 something. Uh, what else we got? All right, so let's get on with it. Let me get all this stuff off here. We'll get on with it. I hope he leaves another comment because I like reading jokes every once in a while. All right, so here we go. This here is the density map. That's the nice uh, word they call it here. And you can see this is all of the trailers. All the trailers here. One, two, three, load boards showing this. So density map here. And uh, Tom, I like, you know, the dash cam that uh, Samsara has with their with their uh, ELD. We're, we're testing those out, and that dash cam is great. Uh crystal clear but you have to have that samsara to you know and it comes free they, they're giving away the equipment during this covid 19 deal uh in the description below if you click on the link you know you can get that deal all right let's see here um this is all the trailers now we're going to make it uh let's look at van let's see what's going on with van freight well you gotta have there you gotta you gotta pick the right map snow lord here's the map as you can see on this map we have a lot of orange we have a lot of red don't go to these red areas try to stay in the orange in the green that's your running areas so this here is van What's up, John Armstrong? So the van map isn't looking that great. I mean, it's it's okay. 
it, with the situation that it's going to, it's like two months, over two months of this stuff going on, uh, shut down stuff. And we still have green. That's a, that's a nice key indicator. I mean, it's a lot better than being all orange and red. There is still some life here. So if you run, you run in this area. And that's it. So basically draw a line right down here, you know, right to here and over to here. And you just run this area. Now the northeast is always going to be your best bet uh, if you want to maximize on rate per mile, uh, but not a whole lot of miles. Now let's change this density map to reefer. And, you know, we had a uh, reefer guy, Northern Express. He did 30 grand last month. Because all he does is go from here to here, back and forth. And then, you know, one of our guys, he just went from here to over here, back and forth. All right. So here's the reefer. Kind of looks like the van, except, you know, they got, you know, a little less red. They got more because, you know, you get produce starting to roll. And guess what? Florida, money's not going to be like it used to be out of Florida, but it's going to be a lot better. You're going to come out of Florida for you know, $1.20, $30, $40 a mile because watermelons are rolling. Watermelons have started rolling. Uh, so you can go down there and still come out in this market a decent rate for this market. So let's look at flatbed. Now, flatbed will start going higher when the, if the states are opening up because they got to go, right? They got to go. So here we are. We have all this. Flatbed's looking a lot better than a lot of the other trailers. So they got a whole lot less uh, red. You know, there's not much red there. A lot, you know, you got some nice green here, nice orange. Flatbed's looking better than what they have in a long time. And let's look at the uh, Northwest. Boom. Other truck to James Best, what's up? Jack Foss, what's up? Little Viking coach, what's going on? A1 says, looky there, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, good eating. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. Might as well take a look and uh, see what's happening. So let's go to find loads. We have Albany, New York in there already. So let's just take a look. And this is set for any day. Um, so you can see it's set for any day. We'll leave it like that. We're going to click the button, and we got it sorted by rate per mile. Now, 350 bucks. These are short loads, 59 miles. If you're in a bad state, that's going to be 125 bucks. But since you're on the East Coast, you know, it's three times the money what they're going to try to push on you in one of those red states. But, you know, people want to make more than that. And if you could do two of these in a day, that'd be 700 bucks. Even if you had a deadhead back, that's really good money for this environment. It's a good rate per mile. And uh, a little a little of something is better than a lot of nothing. And what that means is, so you get stimulus money. Don't sit home and live off of it. If you get your truck note put off for three months, four months, five months, six months, whatever, just don't sit home. It's the time to run then because then you can bank up money because you don't have to pay those payments. If you just sit and live off the free money, eventually that money's gone and your truck note comes back. And if the rates don't come back to full, you know, average rates, you're going to be in trouble. So people don't think about that. They don't think that far ahead. They think of the now, you know... And it's easy. You know, it's easy not to do anything if, if you got money coming in, you know, from government free money, right? All right, here we go. 264 a mile, Wilton, New York to Copiaga, New York. 227. This is done 57, 52 seconds ago. 264, 600 bucks. Let's see what that is. That is above the two week average two weeks ago. It was 228, so it's 37 cents above that two week average. Uh, James, get on this Mattoon dog food and head out. 
too far away. James could dead it. He just doesn't want to. Um, Jeff, I have an Allentown, Allentown PA to Kirby, New Jersey for 560. 0.76 loaded miles. 560 bucks for 76 loaded miles. There you go. See? Falcon Transport, right? I mean, that's good money for the 76 miles. And you can always talk them up. But that's where the money's at. You know, and then people, they don't want to go over there and run it. Well, then I don't want to hear no excuses. I don't want to hear no crying about it. Um, it is what it is. 700 bucks. Pittston, PA to Uxbridge, Massachusetts. 255 a mile. 700 bucks. That's 25 cents. So you can still get above the two-week averages on the East Coast. Let's see here. And if you don't use this board and want to use it, there's your discount code. 35 bucks. Get all these tools. There you go. 700, 700. Look at this. This is, you know, this is probably a fat fingered. Uh, no, it's all these different dates. He's got them all. It must be a dedicated run because he's got them pretty much every single day. Cowan Systems uh, has 600 bucks, 233 a mile, 233, 233. So we can see that the East Coast does have some decent money over there. Now, let's go back a little ways and. Uh, you know, let's travel about 350, 400 miles back over to Columbus, Ohio. Oh, that's Grand Prairie, Texas. There ain't nothing there. We don't want to go to Grand Prairie, Texas. All right, 469 any day, any time loads. King of Freight, 256. So right there... For right now, that's the highest, as of right now today, two minutes ago, rate per mile coming out of there. Um, chop Tank, 248 Lockburn, Ohio, back to West Middlesex, New York, Pennsylvania. Now, if we click on this, we will see that they are $0.08 cents above that average. Now, let's get a little bit longer run. Well, these are 214. 202. 199, Ohio to Indiana, 195, that's low. And I didn't have to see it to know that, 31 cents, 226. Could you talk up to that? Of course, but I'd be asking for 500 bucks. That's just me. Ohio to Massachusetts, $1,100. That is above. So it was bad, right? Last two weeks have been bad. It's a little higher this time. Why? Maybe some reefers are being taken up for the produce starting to run. You know, flatbeds are starting to go back to work. Maybe there's enough van guys just sitting around doing nothing. And the ones that are out there working are going to capitalize. So if you look at miles and tolls, you can do profit calculator and see there's $100 in tolls. Even though that's above, I'd still be asking for that toll money in there. Why not ask for twelve hundred bucks? Twenty one hundred to Colorado Springs from Indiana. That's right on the money from the last two weeks. Buck seventy five. Then we can see Polaris Logistics. Come on, man! You got to be kidding me. There ain't no one gonna run that because it's two eighteen. Usually, you don't short stuff. You don't you don't bow down to them. They don't get a pass. You know, 180 miles, 300 bucks, that's not a pass. It's still a short load. And if, if it takes all day load, it's got to pay a daily rate. It's 500 bucks minimum, right? Four or 500 bucks. Say, so where's, the, where's the money? Yeah, Falcon, it, it, you guys are going to have a, a pretty good time. Uh, when they get, they make them go back to work. They got to run that. Plus, you know, they're going to be busy because instead of um, killing the livestock, you know, now they'll be processing livestock for food instead of letting, you know, it's tragedy if they do that. <clears throat> you know, if they just 
you know, let it go to waste. I mean, come on. There's a Youngstown Lewis Agricultural Logistics. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Agricultural Logistics. You're below. You're below. I don't care if it's one pick, one drop. That's all these folks. That's one of them early in the morning. Who wants to do that? That's extra pay to, to have to wake up at 2 in the morning. Isn't that right? OTJB? Snorlord? Well, I hope they all, yeah, let them all part. Because they'll be sitting at home, sitting out there fishing, and the rates go back up and they don't even know it. And you're out there capitalizing it and they're out there going broke. And then you'll be able to buy their truck when it goes to the auction. Read some of these here. There's Snorlord's thing right there. I've seen uh, Pale Rider now, you guys. That was pretty funny, man. You guys, you had that, trying out that new software. All right. All right, so we're going to get out of there and let's go down to Florida. You know, watermelons are running, right? We'll go right in the middle. We're going to check them out. Orlando, Florida. And we got about another five or eight minutes, and I'm out of here this morning because I got lots of things to do. Uh, 279. Okay, we got 200 bucks, 833 a mile. Kissimmee to Haynes City, Florida. 275, 275. See, even Florida's paying more than Ohio. Who is that logistics company? Dollar <clears throat> ninety, Trenton, Florida, to Hartford, Alabama. That's got to be watermelons. I mean, it's forty-five five. You know it's watermelons. You better have a vented van. Uh, Leesburg, Florida, dollar. Say, so here's one. Look at this. A dollar sixty. Two pick, two drop. A dollar sixty to New Jersey. Dollar twenty-three. Which these are these are below the average. Did you see that? And then of course you come down here and they got some cheap stuff, right? But no one's gonna run this load here. You wanna try the app thingy? Oh what, the new one? So we'll swing out of there and uh, let's go to Texas. Where the freight stinks. 243 sort by mile. Dollar 81 to Louisiana. You know, you can get some short stuff uh, that is paying higher than the last two weeks. 26 cents. Buck 24 to PA. Brownwood, Texas. That's below. 14 cents below. Here's a dollar 13. That's right on the money. And a dollar seven to come up here to Lansing, Michigan, which is below. And here's a, here's a nice tidbit information. I called on a load for one of our contractors Friday. And uh, I might have told this story, but I'll tell it again. And I was, had the broker on the phone. She said, it's $1,200. I says, no, I need $1,400. She says, no, I, I got 1200 into it. I said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. She goes, oh, yeah. I said, I need 1400 She says, oh, what's your MC number? So I give her her MC number. She said, oh, what's the truck number? What's this? Okay, I'll send you over the rate con. I get the rate con, it's 1200 I gave it back to her. I said, no, I told you 14 she Tried to pull a fast one on me. It ain't going to work. Ask Snorlord. I read every rate kind. I saw that there's Charter James, but I read, I read every rate kind that comes across. You know, I double check them, triple check them. I don't trust any of them. <clears throat> All right. Especially look at the president, you know, TIA, the stuff he was talking about. Huh. Hey, Rich Rapids, you get a hold of the uh, dealership and uh, see what they're going to do. All right. So let's check out. Uh, Carlsbad, California. Go over there and see old uh, Willie and Scott. See what's happening. Oh, and Gats. Not going to be a Gats. No truck shows this year. 
the coronavirus wiped out the trucking industry. Literally, it's wiping out the trucking industry. It's wiping out everybody on the rates, and it's wiping out the truck shows. Rate per mile, 476. If you're in the L.A. Basin, you can still make money. Look at this, Ontario, California, to McCarran, Nevada. Why are these guys crying over there? That's 379 a mile. That's 867 bucks. 379 a mile for 229 miles. Look at that's way above. That's 87 cents above the last two weeks. Look at that nice graph. We're playing the stock market here. Ups and downs, right? 700 bucks, 213 a mile. 210 a mile all the way up to Washington from Anaheim. That's above 54 cents. Boy, you better get over there on the West Coast. Run up and down. But coming back across, you're going to pay the piper. So we're going to go way down here. Is there one that even got one listed? Nope. They really don't have nothing listed. Texas, 97 cents. Look at that. That's down. That would be ashamed of themselves. You know, type slower, John. Don't come to Nevada. You'll never get out. Well, let's see. Let's see, John. Let's let's put in uh, Henderson, Nevada. It's only thirty-seven loads sitting there. Dollar twenty-two to Arizona. Eighty-eight cents, baby. Vegas to National Stockyards, Illinois. Can you believe that, man? Whew. That's how ashamed they ought to be. Forty cents below a dollar twenty-eight. Ebony White, Ebony White, Chop Tank. Come on now. We all know you're getting twenty-eight hundred plus dollars. Probably getting three thousand dollars. Probably. <clears throat> there you go, Southbound Jay. What's going on? Oh, did you send me a text message, Southbound Jay? All right. Search. We're out of Henderson, Nevada. We're going to go over to James's. Let's go over to James. And let's see if we get James out of the house. I'm not going to say where you live, James. But I'll put somewhere close. Let's see if we can get you out of the house. Get you rolling. Because, you know, you have too much time on your hands. I mean, you're doing gardening and everything. And you're just looking good. It's time to get out of the house. Time to roll. Time, time to get the cobwebs off there. You know, you got flat spots on your tires. Let's see here. <clears throat> he won't go to University Park. Can't even give him this one. Too close to Chicago. Here's an Iowa to Iowa, James. You want to go to Iowa to Iowa? 400 bucks. Nah, I don't think James wants to do that either. Come over here to Michigan. We'll cook out. Montana. There you go, James. Go to Montana. That's 40, almost 40 cents above. 38 cents above. Two-week average. Go to Montana, have your safety vest on, because those are great videos when you're going to see National Monuments with your safety vest on, and they think you're part of the worker. You can get away with that. Just wear a mask. Um, see what else we can get James to do. Yeah, I'd go to Montana, man. Get on up there, James. Because potatoes, you can run potatoes back out of there. Something. Yeah, come on over. Take that load to Michigan. He won't go to New Jersey. Don't go to Dallas. Well, you can go to Dallas. You can stop by Snorler's house. He'll feed you. He'll feed you a good meal. Menominee, Wisconsin. Uh, I got a joke sent to me about Menominee, Wisconsin. 
what to tell later. All right, so James, he's not wanting to run. That's on this board. We could like check another board, see what's going on over there. Uh, but he could, he could run, take a short, you know, short four hundred fifty dollar load if he wants to. Because see, he'd say no, but then you could go to Clayton, Indiana, and see what's coming out of there, right? So you could go in here, and you could go Clayton. And see if there's something going back to Sterling, Illinois. Get them back home. There's lots of loads around Clayton, Indiana. Tons of freight around Clayton, Indiana. So he's got, he can go back for 750, Lawrenceburg, Kentucky to North Lake, Illinois. Then go home. Then go back home. He could do that. Indianapolis, between Illinois, what else we got? $2,100, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Go there and pick you up a load of beer, James. Bring it back to the house. There's your $1,900, Miles City, Montana. $1,200 over to Allentown, PA. Go over there. Go over and uh, check out Pennsylvania for a while. You, you, you like Pennsylvania. Alabama, go down and see Moon Flea down in Alabama. Take a load out by California, pass by and see John. So there you go. Rates are a little bit better in some areas. We've seen that rates are a little bit better, going up a little bit in some areas. Midwest mainly, uh, northeast. Uh, West Coast has some good stuff. And if you stay interstate, maybe go up to Washington. Not looking too bad. Florida's picking back up a little bit because the watermelons are running. Um, reefer rates are probably better than van, of course. And uh, flatbeds are starting to roll because as they're opening up stuff, things are opening. There you go. Spot market money. Monday. Hopefully things are going to look better in May. If you have deferred payments... You got some free cash. You might want to go out and run a little bit. One, it's good for the truck to keep the fluids rolling. Two, it's better to put money, some money in the bank than take money out of the bank. You know, unless you got a million bucks sitting in there. Then it really doesn't matter now, does it? What's happening, everybody? We're out of here. Uh... Yeah, just drive around and visit people. Sure, James. Bring them a care package. So that's what you could do, James. You could bring them a care package, and then you could take all those miles and, and fuel and everything you bought and then send the bill into the government because, you know, you're, you're checking on people and you're delivering care packages. All right, man, we'll see everybody later. Anthony Bressler. Thanks, buddy. You're the care package. Well, come on over, James. Get the load over to Michigan. And I'll let you drive this Tesla Model S. I'll let you drive it. Just for you, James. You'll be the first one to take it for a spin. First one, take it for a spin. All right. <laughs> See? And look, we'll I'll just we'll take the hot tub cover, boom, lift it up, crank that baby up, turn on the jams, and uh have uh ribs smoking in the in the smoker. Maybe throw some steaks on the grill if you can even find some steaks. But you know, the ribs will have to get right away because you know, if they don't get those pork plants up and rolling, who knows what's gonna happen. Who knows? Hello to all the, all the people on Facebook. What's happening? James will deliver a personal rant. Well, I'll film it. James will have the best live show he's had ever. We'll put the big cameras on him. We'll film it. And could you imagine? Could you imagine the live video if, if OTJB was 
was kicked back in a hot tub with music going, and he just polished off a bottle of Knob Creek and then starting on a 30-pack. <laughs> oh, boy. It'd be epic. You guys hang in the hot tub while I run for 80 cents a mile. You're not running for 80 cents a mile, Snorlord. Do you want me to give your number out? I won't give your number out, but you're not running for 80 cents a mile. I see what you're running. Who are you trying to kid? Let's see here. Here's a dry van load. CRST. Evansville, Indiana to Gary, Indiana. Food ingredients. See, that's another thing. You know, if it's so bad, how come all these mega carriers and all these guys are still throwing their loads out to the general public? And their own people aren't even hauling it. Even like Landstar. Uh, Paschel Logistics has a lot of good stuff here. They got some DeKalb, Illinois to St. James, Missouri. There you go. OTJB, call them up. Picks up today. Crest Hill, Illinois to New Caney, Texas. Uh, De Pere, Wisconsin. Yeah, they got all kinds of loads on here. All right, so we're out of here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.